So now you can see I've deleted a number of parameters and I'm just down to forward scatter and side scatter. You always want to keep those. Those are your light scanner, light scatter parameters. And then we've got two fluorescence channels, APC and FITSI. I always like to have people select height and width for your scatter. This collects two extra parameters that is useful for doing doublet discrimination or gating on singlets. So I always select those. Most applications you'll see that forward and side scatter are linear and fluorescence is on log. So if we scroll over to the right and we see our empty global sheet, this is where we're going to start to make some plots. So most typically uh, you can use any of these, these plot tools at the top. This is a dot plot, then the contour plot, and histogram plot. So typically I'll start with the contour plot. And the default is forward versus side scatter. That's always the first thing I want to look at. Forward scatter roughly correlates to cell size on the X, and then side scatter roughly correlates or corresponds to internal complexity or granularity. So I put that on the Y. This is a good place to start looking at um, your cells. You can tell a lot about viability and health and possibly different subtypes just by looking at forward and side scatter. If you right click on the plot, you get a menu that pops up and the first one says show population hierarchy. I always put that up because that allows us to do subgating and it shows the relationships of all the gates. So within this first plot, once we start running cells or beads or any particles through the instrument, we're able to create gates. So you've got a number of gating tools. You have a, a freeform tool, a square tool, and interval gates. So I'm going to just start with this freeform tool and just create kind of a, a rounded gate in the center. Double click to close it. It's called P1, for parameter 1, or population 1. Uh, over in the population hierarchy, you can see that it appears. Its default name is P1 there, and the default color is red. If you double click on the red, you can change that to something else. If you click on the P1, you can also rename that. And you can call it whatever you like, or you can just leave it in the default name. Uh, so in our experiment, as I mentioned earlier, we're just looking at two fluorescence parameters. So typically what I like to do is make a histogram or a single parameter plot for each of my fluorescence parameters. So using the histogram tool at the top, I'll make two histograms. Um, you'll notice that the, um, this window actually has a grid. That really relates to just printing. Not a lot of people are printing directly from the cytometer computer. Uh, if you want to expand and, and have everything fit in the print area, you can, you can change the size of this also using the inspector. But for now, we're just going to look at uh, one, one sheet and it's okay if things overlap into that gray non-print area. To change the parameters on each plot, you simply click on the axis label. So for this one, you can see we've got these parameters and I want to view Fitzy. And here I want to view APC, because again, when we look in the inspector, those are the two parameters that we're collecting. Uh, you also notice we can highlight the two plots by encircling them with the mouse, and then once they're highlighted again, we can go to the inspector, and we can change a number of options on how the plots are displayed, but I'm going to change the title so the title shows the populations. So you can see both of them here say all events at the top, meaning it's showing everything, not just with what's within this gate. But if I right click, I can select show populations and then select scatter. And then you see the header changes and we're just looking now at what's in that scatter region.